ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय भगवदगीता Text number 10 mm, page number 25252 brahmani ajja karmani sangam chakva rokti aha लिम्पते न सामनी लिम्पते न सामनी लिम्पते न Lord Brahmi unto the supreme person of god Arya resigning Kamini all works Sangam attachment Agva giving up Prati forms Yah who then be they affected no never saha he what pain on by sins padma patram lotus leaf eva like amasa by the water Translation for Port by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami, Srila Prabhupada. One who performs his duty without attachment, surrendering the results unto the Supreme Lord, is unaffected by sinful action, as the lotus leaf is untouched by water. Purport. 
Here, Brahmani means in Krishna consciousness. This material world is some total manifestation, three modes of material nature, technically called the Pradhan. The Vedic hymn, Sarvam hi etan Brahma mukunda muk muduk ya ipanashar. Two, Tasmar etad Brahma nama rupam anam cha javite. Mukunda Upanishad, 1 to 10, and in the Bhagavad Gita, 14.3, Mama Yonir Maha Brahma, indicate that everything in the material world is a manifestation of Brahman, and all the effects are differently manifested, they are not different from the cause. In each Upanishad, it says that everything is related to the Supreme Brahman. Or Krishna, that everything belongs to him only. One knows perfectly well that everything belongs to Krishna. He is the provider of everything, and that therefore everything is engaged in the service of the Lord. Naturally, it has nothing to do with the results of his activities, whether virtuous or sinful. Even one's material body, being a gift of the Lord, or carrying out a particular type of action, can be engaged in Krishna consciousness. Is the, it is then beyond contamination from sinful reaction, exactly as the lotus leaf, though remaining in the water, is not wet. The Lord also says in Bhagavad Gita 3.30, Mai Sabam Kamani Sanyasa, Sanyasya, resign all work unto me, Krishna. The conclusion is that a person without Krishna consciousness acting according to the concept of his material body and senses. But a person in Krishna consciousness acts according to the knowledge that the body is the property of Krishna and therefore and should therefore be engaged in the service of Krishna. I'll read that again. The conclusion is that a person without Krishna consciousness acts according to the concept of the material body and senses. But a person in Krishna consciousness acts according to the knowledge that the body is the property of Krishna and should therefore be engaged in the service of Krishna. Svayarupa Kadamayam Danti Swapadanti Kam. So this is a continuation from yesterday verse. Given the class was given by Keshe Damana Abu. Explain this verse. Yesterday's verse said that a person in divine consciousness, although, divine consciousness, although engaged in seeing, hearing, touching, smelling, eating, moving about, sleeping, breathing, always knows while within himself he actually does nothing at all. Because while speaking, it's too loud. Can you turn it down a little? It's too loud, the feedback. My ball, it's too loud. Can you adjust it? Feedback. Oh, he's not the sound man. Oh. Anyway, he always knows that only the material senses are engaged in their objects and that he is aloof from them. Today's verse, one who performs his duty without attachment, surrendering the results unto the Supreme Lord, is unaffected by sinful action, as lotus leaf is untouched by water. 330 says, 330 says, Therefore, O Arjuna, surrender all your work unto me, with full knowledge of me, without, without desire for profit, with no claims to proprietorship, and free from lethargy fight. 
And <coughs> 423 says, the total material substance called Brahman is the source of birth. Is that Brahman that I impregnate, making the birth of all living beings, O son of Martha? Omar Yanatram Dischad, Janajana Sakaya, Saksum, Tam Jinat, as Mary Shigur Vainmaha, Shri Shetani, Manobi Stam, Stapitam Yenabutale, Swayam Rupa, Katamayam, Tanti Stop, and Tanti Kam. Translation One who perfectly who performs his duty without attachment, surrendering the results unto the Supreme Lord, is unaffected by sinful action, as the lotus leaf is untouched by water. So here we have a series of verses 7 to 12, how to perform karma yoga. By having knowledge, this Bhagavad Gita is giving us transcendental knowledge. So, the difference. Other religions have their scriptures, the Quran, the Bible, the Torah, but they're not the same as the Bhagavad Gita because they don't give transcendental knowledge and they don't have this basic understanding that we're not this body nor religion teaches that we're not this body that we're a spirit soul Amber Masri that we're Javara Subhavanita Krishna Das So this is called Niskam Karma Yoga. Here it's described that the one who performs his duty compared to a lotus leaf is untouched by water. So if you see a lotus flower, it grows in a pond that's above the water and the leaves are above the water. Although it's in the water, but it's not being touched by the water. In the same way, um, the self-realized soul, the person in Krishna consciousness who is perfect, is Krishna, perfected his Krishna consciousness, knows that he has nothing to do with his body as he lives from his body. It's like the lotus leaf, even though sometimes water splashes on the lotus leaf, because it has a waxy surface, the water doesn't stay on it, it slides off. So this is, a um, person in the Krishna consciousness understands this, that he has to work for Krishna, but he doesn't get a reaction in the material world for every action, there's a reaction. An eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. But for someone who's practicing Krishna consciousness, he doesn't incur a karmic reaction because the time of initiation the spiritual master takes the karma of his disciple, but the brother karma is still there from past life. So when you turn off the fan, it doesn't stop moving or suddenly. It keeps going for some time. So in the same way, one may ask, you know, why devotees in Krishna consciousness are suffering from they get sick, they have disease, they get into accidents. So many things happen to their body. 
But it's not karma from this life. It's karma from a past life. Pradna karma. It doesn't get washed away. But the devotee goes on with his activities in the se- any in any circumstance. Srila Prabhupada went to America at the age of 70, traveled on a cargo ship for 35 days. Very difficult journey. And he, uh, and he suffered from two heart attacks. But there was no doctor, there was no ICU, there was no, no one to help him. But he just prayed to Krishna and suffered through it. And somehow Krishna protected him and made his voyage so smooth. The captain of the ship and his wife, they said that they asked Sri Prabhupada if he could come back on their next voyage across the Atlantic because they said it was the smoothest ride, the smoothest uh, trip they ever had on the Atlantic Ocean. And it was because Prabhupada was there and Krishna was guiding him. So Prabhupada came to America to give us this knowledge, transcendental knowledge. Now we see in the case Sanatana Goswami, he was going to meet Lord Chaitanya through the Jarakanda forest and he contacted his uh, itching sores. He drank bad water. He got itching sores all over his body and they were oozing and smelling bad. So he had decided in his mind that when he got to Jagannapuri, his body was contaminated and he didn't want to offend anyone so that he was going to jump, throw his body underneath the Rathyatra cart at the time of Rathyatra so he can attain liberation. But Mahaprabhu could understand his mentality and said no, you can't do that because that body doesn't belong to you. But I have given you that body and I have so much service for you to do through that body. So therefore, uh, you cannot give up your body. And Lord Chaitanya embraced him and all his sores went away. Another time, Sanatana Goswami was going to meet Lord Chaitanya was in the summertime and he didn't want to walk in front of the temple because he was a, didn't want the pandas to get touch him. So he, he went on the beach on the hot sand. And when he got to Lord Chaitanya, Lord Chaitanya said, did you burn your feet? And Sanatana Goswami said, what? I didn't feel anything because he was so absorbed to go to Lord Chaitanya that he didn't even notice that he, his feet were blistered. So this Krishna conscious person is aloof from the uh, material body. Although he has a body, but he doesn't uh, relate to the body. The body is temporary. The body will perish at some time, but the life force in the body is the spirit soul. Scientists want to say that life comes from chemicals, but they can't prove that fact. And we say, we'll give you all the chemicals, and you make life from chemicals. But they are, say, in the future, won't make life from chemicals. They're simply bluffing, like giving a post-it check with no money in the bank. So life cannot come from chemicals. It's the uh, 
life force in the body, the symptom of life is consciousness. And consciousness, is the symptom of consciousness is the soul. So the soul is within the body. And yam yam vapi smaram bhavam, whatever you remember at the time of death, that will take the soul to its next body. It says that living entity in conditioned life accepts one body after another as the air carries the aroma. So it's a very subtle change from one body to another. And it's not something that can be perceived or seen with the material eye. But the soul is so active in this body, then why should it be inactive at the time of death? The soul is never inactive. The Maya bodies, they want to merge into the Brahman. Um, they want to say the material world is false. Brahma is such a jug and mitya. They say the material world is so false and everything is Brahman or spiritual. So they want to give up their identity, give up their individuality and just merge into the Brahman. But Prabhupada came uh, to defeat this Nevisesha Sunyavadi Bhaskara Dosatarni. Prabhupada came to defeat his voidism and uh, impersonal philosophy of the Maya bodies and the even the Brahma bodies. Sukadeva Goswami was in the womb of his mother for 12 years. He didn't want to come out of the womb because he was afraid he would get entangled in material life. Although he was Brahman realized he knew he was in the body but he still didn't know what his activity should be. So Krishna came to him when he was in the womb and told him, you can come out of your body, you won't get entangled in material life. So as soon as Sukadeva Goswami came out of the body of his mother, he left home. And his father went after him to bring him back. So Sukadeva Goswami then, while he was in the forest, he heard a verse from the Srimad Bhagavatam. He went back home and heard the Bhagavatam from his father. And then, Piyasadeva, then he became a self-realized soul. So at the time when Maharaj Prichit was about to die, he had seven days notice that uh, Sukadeva Swami arrived there and all the sages and rishis and yogis from all over the universe, they also came there to hear Sukadeva Goswami narrate Shiva Bhagavatam, which is 18,000 verses and this is a spotless Purana. There's 18 Puranas, three, six in the mode of goodness, six in the mode of passion, six in the mode of ignorance. But it says Shiva Bhagavatam is a spotless Purana. So Srila Prabhupada made it his life mission to translate and purport Srimad Bhagavatam, Chaitanya Charitamrita, Bhagavad Gita, and many other books. But uh, because he had been ordered by his spiritual master that it, you should preach in the English speaking language. And uh, when he met his spiritual master the last time at Radhakun, the spiritual master told him, if you ever get money, print books. But he wanted them to speak, preach in English and he wanted them to print books. But there wasn't any books to print. Because at that time, most of the books were in Hindi or Bengali and some were, there may have been a few English books. But for the most part, uh, books were, had the wrong interpretation, gave a Mayavadi interpretation. So in order for Prabhupada to fill that order to print books, he had to write the books first. Even the uh, 
Maybe some books were printed by Gaudiya Math. I don't know, but not the full Chaitanya Charitamrita, not the full Srimad Bhagavatam. So Prabhupada had to fulfill the order of his spiritual master to preach in the English language. He had to uh, take that journey, and then he, when he got to New York, he had to start the International Society for Krishna Consciousness, and at the same time, he had to write the books and print, print the books. And Prabhupada didn't know how to type. He had a typewriter, a manual typewriter, and he was typing with one finger. And how can you expect to pr produce a book by typing with one, two fingers? It's a very laborious job for someone 70 years old. But somehow or other, Prabhupada managed to uh, recruit some young men to help him. Gradually people came who could, uh, he got a dictaphone, he got a, he got a editor, he got someone to type out his uh, uh, translations and uh, manuscripts, he did it. So everything started to come together. Then Prabhupada incorporated International Society for Krishna Consciousness. And he, although at that time he only had a handful of fledging disciples who didn't know anything about Krishna Consciousness and weren't even following the principles. But gradually Prabhupada introduced the four regulated principles, no meeting, no gambling, no intoxication, no illicit sex. And then he had the devotees promise to chant 16 rounds every day. And then he started initiating different people. In this way, the movement began to expand. So here in this verse, um, it's talking about the Pradhan. From the Pradhan comes the Mahatapa. From the Mahatapa comes Lord Brahma. From Lord Brahma comes the uh, all the uh, the progenitors. Lord Brahma is the secondary creator. So he creates all the uh, planets, 17, 14 planetary systems, and he creates the um, living entities come out from Brahma's body, progenitors of mankind, Kashyapa Muni, Kardama Muni, uh, Daksha, Prajapati Daksha, so the different living entities were given the uh, task to create uh, living entities to populate the universe. So there's 8,400,000 species of life and they're, they're not only on this planet, they're on every single planet, different species of life. So there's 400,000 human species and that includes the demigods. When Lord Brahma created eight different kinds of demigods, one of those are are demons. So there's always in conflict between the demigods and the demons. So uh, this material world is uh, made up of 14 planetary systems. The foolish scientists, they want us to believe that there's no life on any other planet. There's only life on this planet. But that's not a fact. If there's life on this planet, and why can't there be life on any other planet? Because there are three modes of material nature, prakriti, kriyamana, ni, guna, karma, and sarasa, hankara, vimudatma, kartam, idimanyate. When the living entity comes into the material world, he falls from the spiritual world, then it's covered over by the three modes of material nature. He thinks he's the doer of activities. So, uh, <coughs> the, according to the karma, <coughs> the time of creation, Lord Brahma creates all the different living entities. According to their karma, they accept different, different life forms on different planets throughout the universe. So the whole material world is populated 
by different forms of life, different species of life, 8,400,000 400,000 of human species. So, here in this purport, it's talking about uh, how everything is owned and controlled by the Lord, Bhaktaram Jagnatapasam Sabalokameshwaram, Sridham Sarabhutanam Gatvamam Ritati. And Shiva Ishupanishad also confirms that Ishavasham idam sarvam yatkinchid gadyam jagadat tenya taktena bhujita ma griha kasha srid danam. Everything animate and inanimate that is within the universe is controlled and owned by the Lord. But you therefore accept only those things necessary for himself, or set aside his quota, or shall not accept other things, know well to whom they belong. <coughs> so the person in Krishna consciousness. We heard yesterday that the bodily activities are going on, but he's aloof from his bodily activities. Many examples of that. Crazy. Yesterday was, no, today was the appearance of Vamadev. So Vamadev first he appeared as the form of Vishnu form, then he assumed the form of a Brahmana, dwarf Brahmana. And he went to Bali Maharaj to ask for charity. <coughs> so Bali Maharaj said, yes, I'll give you whatever you want. So he said, Mahamadi said, I just want three paces of land, three steps of land. So Bali Maharaj said, well, that's, you're not very intelligent, but I mean, I, I mean the controller of all, all, all the different planets, all everything. In the universe, I can give you so much. Why do you only want three paces of land? But <coughs> Bali Maharaj, the spiritual master, Sukacharya, told Bali Maharaj, don't give this boy anything because he's the Supreme Personality Godhead and he'll take everything from you and then I won't get my maintenance. I, who's going to support me if you? give everything to the Lord. So Bali Maharaj was a surrendered soul. Nine processes of devotional service, Shravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu, Smaranam. The last two are becoming a friend and not many Vainanam, surrendering everything. So Bali Maharaj was ready to surrender everything. Although he had a, so, many th so many things, he became a penniless beggar because he promised to give Bamadev three steps of land and he couldn't go back on his promise. Even though Sukhacharya, his spiritual master, gave him so much evidence where if you um, promise something to someone, then you can't, uh, Sukhacharya told him that you can uh, deny, you don't have to keep your promise. Instead of, you know, if you save your life or, if, of course, he gave so many different excuses you can make if you don't want to keep your promise. But Bali Maharaj said, no, I don't ex accept you as my spiritual master because you're giving me the wrong instruction and the, that I should not surrender to the Lord because that's the, um, that's the uh, essence of Bhagavad Gita Sarvadharma Pichaja Mamekam Saranamaja Hamnam Java Bhavnayo Moksha Shari Masaja Krishna says just surrender everything to me, I'll say protect you from all sinful action. Don't do not fear Master Jaha. So we want this is what a devotee is supposed to do, he's supposed to surrender everything. The Bhagavad spiritual man told him not to surrender to Vamandev. So he did that. 
they decided to give everything to Vamadev. But Vamadev took one step, he covered the earth, took two steps, he covered everything in outer space, everything was covered. Then he said to Bali Maharaj, you, are, you promised to give me three steps, but now you only gave me two. So you, can, you didn't keep your promise. Where should, I, what, where should I put the third step? So Bali Maharaj said, you can put the third step on my head. So in this way, he exemplified full surrender. The ninth canto, Srimad Bhagavatam, we have the example of Ranti Dev, who was fasting for 48 days, him and his family. And then he got a plate of edibles cooked in ghee. He was about to eat and some, someone came and begged for some food. So he gave the half plate away. And someone else came and begged for the rest of the food. So all he had was a cup of water. And someone also, some man came with some dogs and said they were thirsty. So he gave them the water. So he gave everything away. But actually it was Lord Brahma Lord Shiva were just testing him to see how surrendered he was. So even though he had been fasting for 48 days, he was still uh, gave everything away. So this is a detachment. And he left six canto. Indra was told you to go to the Dachi and ask him for his bones. Indra was fighting with the demon uh, Richashura and <clears throat> to defeat him he needed to take the bones of the Dachi and make a weapon. So he went to the Dachi and asked for his bones. The Dachi didn't want to give his bones at first but actually <clears throat> he was self-realized so uh, he went into Samadhi and uh, let them take his bones. He didn't, wasn't attached at all to his body. And in Gorli, the Kulvetra Shirar, he was living a simple life. He would sell banana leaves and banana leaf cups and banana stalks. And whatever income he got, he would give 50% for worshipping the Ganges. And the rest he'd keep for himself. The Mahaprabhu would go to Kulavetra Sridhar every day and <clears throat> he would argue with him over the price of his goods. And Sridhar um, <clears throat> was living very simple. He was living in a hut that had holes in the roof so when it rained he had to have an umbrella. And his clothes were not very nice. So Mahaprabhu said, you know, your neighbors, they worship the demigods and they are living nicely, they have uh, nice clothes, they have all their food, but you don't worship the demigods, so you're not living very well. But Sridhar said, well, I have, I have clothes, they may be the wrong size, they may be a little torn, and I have my heart and I get my maintenance, so I'm not, I'm not, uh, suffering. I'm not in want of anything. But Sridhar knew that the to worship the demigods is for less intelligent men. So he was a soul surrendered to Krishna, surrendered to Lord Chaitanya. And this way, these the different personalities exemplify how how a person can live in Krishna consciousness and knowing that everything is the property of the Supreme Lord, that I'm not this body, and the body is, will perish at a certain point. Everyone has to, um, Janma Mitya Dharavadi, everyone has to take birth, has to suffer from a disease, has to get old, has to die. No one can change that, even though stud doctors may promise to keep that they're going to keep, keep people alive, save people from dying. They can't do that. They can't save people from disease. They make cure one disease, then another disease uh, appears. There's so many hospitals in this world, so many doctors, so many medicines. They can't stop disease, they can't stop old age, and they can't stop death. 
but this must go on. So, <coughs> um, the devotee knows that he's not the do doer, that Krishna is the doer. One who knows perfectly well that everything belongs to Krishna, that he's the proprietor of everything, therefore everything is engaged in the service of the Lord. He ha yasha hare deshe karmana mana gira nik he last api avishta shu jiva mukta sa ujite. A person acting in Krishna consciousness, or in other words, the service of the Lord with body, mind, and intelligence and words is a liberated person even within the material world, although he may be engaged in so many so-called material activities, he has no false ego, but he does not believe that he is this material body or that he possesses the body. He knows that he is not this body and this body does not belong to him. He himself belongs to Krishna and the body too belongs to Krishna. So we come in this world with nothing and we leave this world with nothing. So the whole material world is going on today under false names and false forms. People think I'm Indian, I'm American, I'm African, I'm Chinese. And they're barking. They have rules and if someone from another country wants to go to another country, they bark at him like the dog. The man keeps the dog to keep people away, the big sign, do not trespass, beware of dog. So they bark at people, they say you can't come in our country unless you have your proper papers. And even in Singapore, the only country in the world that wouldn't allow Prabhupada to come in the country. Somehow or other, something happened in the 70s and we were put on the blacklist. So the People, everyone's a dead thinking, I'm this country, I'm from this country, this country belongs to me, and you can't come here unless you have the proper papers. So, uh, this is all going on, misconception. But everything in the world is only controlled by the Lord. They make, there was nothing there in America, was a bear, there was no civilization in America until the British went there and colonized it. And decided that the, and then the people decided that the land belonged to them. The, the land doesn't belong to anyone. It belongs to Krishna. But people have this misconception that the land is mine, that the family is mine, the body is mine, and everything belongs to me. I, me, mine. I'm, I'm a mate. The misconception. And. <coughs> They go on with this misconception to the time of death. So the conclusion is that a person without Krishna consciousness acts according to the um, concept of the material body and senses. But a person in Krishna consciousness acts according to the knowledge that the body is the proprietor of Krishna and should therefore be engaged in the service of Krishna. So the two uh, difference Devotees are active. This Krishna Gandhi movement is for, this chapter is called Krish Karma Yoga Action in Krishna Consciousness. We know we're not advised to go off and live in a cave and try to meditate. But instead, Nirbandhan Krishna Sambandha Yukta Vairagya Ujjate that Prabhupada has given us this uh, Krishna Consciousness movement so we can utilize everything for Krishna's service. It's like a man works in the bank, he counts, he's counting millions of dollars every day, but he knows that not one penny belongs to him. So the devotee, we do so many things. We can do banking, we can build buildings, we can build temples, we can go out and sell books, and, uh, but we leave the results to Krishna, we give everything to Krishna, everything to Krishna's pleasure. And therefore, there's no reaction. We're cleaning the temple, we're cooking in the 
cooking for the deities, dressing the deities, so many things are going on would seem like ordinary activities. But there's no reaction because we're doing it for Krishna's pleasure. Where everyone else in the material world is only working for their own sense gratification and therefore they're not getting any pleasure and <coughs> they're um, simply becoming more and more unhappy and more and more frustrated. Even the jnanis and karmis are morose and frustrated because they can't fulfill their desires. Material senses are such that no one can fulfill their desires no matter how much they try. People have the most money, they end up committing suicide because they're not happy. Big movie stars, big athletes, big actors, big, big people who everyone, uh, uh, everyone uh, utilizes everyone who <coughs> patronizes and, and wish they could be like someone, some famous person, thinks that famous person is happy and <coughs> leaving a very wonderful life. But it, if you examine and ask that person, is not really happy. One devotee has a friend who made a million dollars and <coughs> He told the devotee that your lifestyle is better than mine. I got a million dollars, you don't have any money. But yeah, I'm so, my whole life, I can't sleep at night. I'm so I'm much in anxiety about keeping my money, about my money. So this is a difference between a Krishna conscious person. We can work for Krishna, do everything for Krishna. When we came to Krishna consciousness, we gave up everything. The brahmachari life, very simple. We had one little locker, a few dhotis, a few books, very simple life, nothing. We had nothing. But Krishna provided everything and we were satisfied. We slept on the floor, we ate off, ate off paper plates or wax paper. We got our food, we got our maintenance, we got everything. We didn't need anything. People can't understand. They see us on the street, they say, get a job. Why are you out here begging? Why don't you get a job? Well, he said, we have a job. Our job is to make you Krishna conscious. We're, we don't, why do we need to have a job? People work one job, they can't get enough money, so they have to have two jobs. So the whole day, a whole night, they're working hard like the ass. The ass goes, uh, works very hard, carries load on his back to get a little grass at the end of the day. And then, but the grass is there on the side of the road. He doesn't have to walk, carry any load for to get the grass. Then he goes to have sex life, and the Shias kicks him in the face. And he thinks this is pleasure, and this is what his life is all about. And that's what people are like. It's described in the second canto, that they're like dogs, hogs, camels, asses. And Lord Rishavadev, as an incarnation of the Lord, he instructed his 100 sons about the uh, material life, how one should not act like the cats and dogs, but one should utilize his life to become Krishna conscious or for the service of the Lord. So this is what Krishna consciousness is all about, that we want to, whatever facility we have, we should use it for Krishna's service. And, uh, we have to come to this platform where we understand we're not this body, Ambramasmi, and that will come by gradually practicing Krishna consciousness and by taking shelter with the spiritual master. Yasha Prasada, Bhagavad Prasada, Yasha Prasada, Narakin to Gopi. They, if one pleases the Guru, then Krishna's pleased, and if Krishna's pleased, the Guru is pleased. So no one can go to Krishna directly. We have to uh, get the help of the bona fide spiritual master to take us to Krishna. So the spiritual master is the captain of the boat. The boat, there's a boat that, cross, that will take us across the ocean. A material, material world is like an ocean. So get across the ocean, material bondage, it requires a pure devotee. 
and the pier devotee is the captain of the boat. So everyone can get on the boat. Favorable winds are the Vedic literatures. They will carry us across the material world and get us free from the bondage of the three modes of material nature. So therefore, everyone is bound up in the material world, hand and foot, by the three modes of material nature. Durga is in charge of the material world, but she's, she has a fort. Durga means fort. And she has everyone in prison in the material world. So it's not possible by our own endeavor to get out of the material world. But only if we surrender to a group, spiritual master, surrender to Krishna, then we can get free from the cycle of repeated birth and death. And this is the, the, the goal of Krishna consciousness, that we don't have to take birth. Janma karma chame divyam evam yogeti tatataha chadva deham purnarjana nagimem eti so arjuna one who understands about Krishna and truth, the tapaha, the truth about Krishna's appearance and activities, it does not take birth again in this material world. Krishna says that several times in the Bhagavad Gita, 15th chapter, he says, that abode of mind is not illuminated by the sun, nor moon, nor fire, nor electricity. One who goes there never comes back. And so, uh, this is the goal to get out of the material world is a place of suffering and misery where repeated birth and death takes place. The spiritual world, everyone such and Ananda, ever has eternal knowledge full of bliss. So we have a choice. Do we want to stay in the material world and suffer threefold miseries or we can go uh, take the Krishna consciousness and get free get out of the material world and go back home, back to God and enjoy eternally in the association of Krishna, especially in Golok Mandavan, enjoy the, <coughs> with Krishna in, the, in our different, in the rasa of our relationship with Krishna as the eternal spirit soul. <coughs> so we need to stop there. Question and answer. Question? saying that everything is more complicated until your life becomes more and more complicated. Hare Krishna. So you said that we come empty hand and we go empty hand. What? You said we come in this material world empty handed and we go empty handed. Yeah. But actually you see there are different times of people they are born Somebody is born in this family, somebody is born in middle class, somebody is born in lower class family. So, from there, what you can say? What, what are their karmas they have taken birth? So, they are bringing their karma. They are bringing their karma. He is born in this family, he is born in middle class, he is born in lower class. Why not everybody born in one, one standard? They are born in different standard. So then, according to their karmas, they are born. So they are digging their karmas. They are not coming empty-hand. Even they go.
go, they take their karmas, they have to take the karmas and go. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai.